So this will be really cat. We just locked away. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, and it's and just us now. So it's let's sealed behave. airtight now. Gray, so gray mantis. We have we, three minutes. <laughs> we have three minutes before we run out of oxygen. Yeah. But we do that on purpose. We like to see people struggling. <laughs> yeah. good, 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 good. Yeah. Well, the well, truth well. comes out in the end. Really. <laughs> We're going to choke it out again. <laughs> I'm Joshua Swanson. I have the privilege of sitting with Adam Ag and Michael Tate from Newsboys. We're excited Ooh. to have you guys hanging with us, talking about things that yeah. matter, you know, yep. Jesus yes. and songs and <laughs> yep. artistry and craft. Yeah. Life. Honestly, it's really cool to have you guys here. Thanks, you know, man. I mean, obviously, worship leader, we're typically focused on what people would put in the category of worship right but i've interviewed a lot of folks in maybe your category Mm -hmm. uh, of ccm that are saying hey what i do is write worship songs too i just deliver them in a different format than maybe what you think is worship right so what do you guys first question is what do you guys think about the categories and the labels that we put on music i grew up in in an era where we just did you know as we called it back in the day, social conscious music. I believe worship in a proper form is like the vertical, you know, what we do that honors God. And it can be life, it can be living, loving your best friend, loving your wife, your kids, how you talk to people, how you talk to God, more importantly. But uh, there's also the horizontal involved too. Worship comes from that. So it's kind of the cross formation at the end of the day. But worship is a very um, powerful tool to communicate with our creator. Yeah. That's why I like it. That's why. Yeah. I enjoy it. Do you feel like when you guys go on stage as newsboys that you're worshiping? What do you think, Adam? Yeah, I think <laughs> definitely. Um, I think it's it's changed a lot throughout history, really. Mm-hmm. Like the definition of worship or worship music, you know, from some of the old hymns to when the you know the big worship movement happened, you know, around like two thousand, like ninety nine, two thousand, like mm-hmm. the, the whole thing. I remember we were just getting started with my old band Stellar Cart right then, and we would go lead worship at camps and youth retreats and stuff like that and i i I even had you know pretty prominent like guest speakers come up to me and say you can't play rock and roll and do worship right and i'm like yeah and i was just like this guy's a lot older and a lot wiser than i am (laughs) i was like 19 and i'm like i don't think that's true man i think i can i think that's this is my expression of worship and i think it is an individual thing i think there are songs that are Definitely, like you're saying, yeah. vertical, like yeah. we are singing to God. And that's a little bit, I would say, more obvious in the corporate sense of, of yeah. everybody yeah. worshiping together. And this is the focus. I really think just I mean, using your gifts to point people to the creator. I think that's I think that's worship and that's given back what he's given us. And so, I mean, I've led worship in church. I was a worship leader for years before going out on the road full time and mm-hmm. playing rock music. But I mean, every night that we play... Yeah. There are just amazing moments where you can see the crowd connecting, and it's 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 special. I mean, I love I love rocking out just as much as anybody, but the, those moments are the ones that get you. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good. Adam just gave a great definition. I gotta remember that. How he said, uh, "Worship is using your gift to, do, but basically to, 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 to you know, to honor God, to yeah. honor God." Yeah. yeah, that's what worship is. Using whatever that gift is. Is it, is it speaking? Is it loving your neighbor? Is it loving your your coworker? Is it yeah? You know, working the local mission. Yeah, doing whatever your job is. is as well as you can. Yeah, Heck yeah. Awesome. Well, well said, my friend. Well done. Okay, so you guys are pretty well known. Fame is a pretty tempting idol. How do you guys stay grounded? Sometimes I don't. <laughs> right on. And uh, so you're human. You're saying it turns out. Yeah, it turns out. No excuse. It's a fact. <laughs> and uh, and uh, but when I wake up in the morning time, lately, Josh, I've been saying, God, you know me better than, than I know myself. And I say, Holy Spirit, just fill me today. Hmm. Uh, give me divine intervention appointments divine moments show me your glory and uh just steer me away from from keep me safe from satan's darts but i gotta put that armor on because the armor gets beat up pretty bad mm-hmm. throughout the day and you gotta fill up man you know so my true. pastor said to me one time he says turns out michael we leak so we have to keep filling up mm-hmm. because there are days and there are times but i know when i'm kind of you know not sharpened up i can i can sense a little slippage here and there and things like okay yeah. that's sitting good that's when the bad stuff comes in. Yeah, for sure. That's and, a good. Uh, so you just have to really, it's a daily thing. Yeah. God's grace is immersed to new every day for a reason. Mm. We need them mm. every day. Mm. I think, I think people handle fame differently. I've, I've experienced small levels of fame. Like if, if the whole band is walking through an airport or something like that, you get, you get noticed or if everybody's yeah, together, yeah. but I can kind of hide if I'm just by myself. <laughs> this guy, however, <laughs> uh, he you've doesn't got, care to hide at all. Yeah, and you've got a bit of a recognizable he's, face. He's, he's you know. quite gregarious walking through an airport, singing <laughs> as loud as he can, talking to everybody he can. So 
obviously he gets noticed. <laughs> a little exaggeration. He's, good. he's a big movie star, so he gets noticed. <laughs> but I, you know, I, like you're saying, it is a choice every single time. And and I've I've watched him really try to use those moments to care mm. for those people that are so excited to to meet him or meet us. Yeah. It's just another chance that we can interact with them and and hopefully make their day better and yep, and, yeah. and it's i i really have even when we're super dead tired i don't think i've ever seen or experienced him or anybody uh thankfully in the band like really be rude or mean to somebody we might say a few things after an interaction that we're just like <laughs> sure please leave us alone but it's not <laughs> it's it's usually after we haven't slept for like 40 yeah, hours yeah, or something yeah. like that and yeah. it's just Coming you know from germany or yeah, London, yeah, yeah. yeah but it, just because we're human right yeah, but sure but really i mean most of the time it's we 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 like it he really enjoys i love people talking a lot people. he do. really does i really do um yeah. more than i do even <laughs> um, i'm happy to go sit in my corner and read a book well, or something like that artists that yeah. are and very introverted so yeah yeah it's actually quite common. most artists probably aren't yeah i would say that, so yeah. i would say so yeah. because we give we give everything on stage like yeah. right and you're giving in interviews and you're giving mm -hmm. on the performance and you're just you're out there and you just want to kind of <sighs> go back and take a breath yeah uh, but then if it becomes a an hour long meet and greet in the airport or something like that, <laughs> it it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's all part of it. But he, I I think he does a pretty good job. That's with awesome. It. I respect that. I love Amen. that you do that in the airports. That's really great. So I saw that you guys recorded "I Speak Jesus." Side note, one, you know, my pastor's one of the guys that wrote was one of the co writers on that song, and so I've got a special that has a special place in my heart just yeah. because of our local our local expression, our local community yeah. has really embraced it. But uh, why? Why did that song strike a chord with you guys to, you know, I mean, obviously you guys write your own music, so yeah. write your own songs, but why that song? Why did Sometimes you like as an artist, and Adam can agree with this, as an artist, as a writer, you go, man, I should have wrote that song. Yeah. <laughs> or been in the room when the guy, you know, to be one of the writers on that song. Yeah. In a more real way, it just, it's, it speaks volumes to the lyric. Um, and what we do, you know, as, 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 uh, musical missionaries, I call it sometimes. In public and singing, you know, the God's not dead and that he reigns and that we believe and the something beautiful. And and the song like I Speak Jesus just fits in newsboys format. We are no stranger to covering songs. We kind of newsboyize, newsboyize them. <laughs> them. But uh, what the lyric new, says. That's a new new phrase. Yeah, newsboyize. Yeah, yeah. yeah yep. Got that's, it. that's what uh, drummer Jack can call the newsboyize. It. <laughs> the lyric, man, when it talks about speaking Jesus in the streets. I grew up that way. My dad was a street minister, mm. a minister in a church later on. So, and not being ashamed of that, you know, the Great Commission in Matthew. Jesus, for my family, my mm -hmm. friends, that's like the most powerful part of the song to me. Yeah. Because it's such, it's such a relational thing, you know? So the song just, just struck a chord, literally, a uh, lyrical chord, musical chord. And we thought, we got, you know, let's, let's, let's carry this message further. Mm. Yeah. You know? I mean, we're, we're fans of music just as much as anybody else is. Yeah. And so if we hear a song like that, that really impacts us, yeah. it's like, man, th this song is special. Mm. And so, what would happen if we just recorded our own version of it and we yeah. sang it at our shows and yeah. people just got to have a, a really yeah. great worship moment at yeah. the shows and it turns out like it's it's one of the highlights one of those special so it, highlight it's moments in your show oh 100 yep. absolutely right now? oh yep. wow right on yeah yep. and our worship set within the so i'll show it's like a 28 song night and we cover the whole gamut newsboys have been around for a long time so yeah we go from the old to the new to the new to the, well, the old to the new yeah and that's, yeah. that's part of it yeah that's fantastic yeah. what are some other worship songs that people could expect in a newsboy Newsboy King show. of Kings, we cover him. Mm -hmm. Then, of Kings. course, we have He Reigns, his Newsboy song. Mm -hmm. we, have, we believe in his Newsboy song. God's yeah. not dead, a Newsboy song. We say, uh, think about worship. You think you're worship. You're well, there you go. Yeah. Back to our first question. I know, right? well, what is worship? worship. Yeah. The whole set is worship. Yeah, yeah, it is. Is. That's yeah. what I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. See, well, I mean, I, I, the old mentality, that quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm uh, ministered to by your music yeah. when I'm not in a position where I'm trying to sing in a congregational setting, when I'm just trying to sing to God, but just, you know. Well, so segue that to my next question stand yes like I, that song really resonates with me yes paul's always talking about standing against the devil and, yeah. and, and and it's one of those motions those movements that i feel like the lord is just saying look simply just stand yeah just stand up yeah. i'll do the rest like so what where did that come from that song was there a scripture was there a moment was there well it, it, it was it's actually a life cry i mean it's, it's a desire mm. and once again being human sometimes we fail to stand yeah sometimes we fall yeah but as my bestie, our bestie, Toby Max says, when you fall down and get back up again. Mm. Uh, and sometimes it's tough to stand when there's so much coming at you mm -hmm. uh, from social media, mm -hmm. from friends, negative energy around you. 
it's tough to take a stance on the peer pressure. The list goes on. It's it's a tough thing, but when we do, what a difference it makes. Mm. And when we don't, what a difference it makes. Mm. That's good. End, but in the end, we're commanding. We know we're commanding you know, to, 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 to 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 stand up. Yeah. When we do that, we're gonna have all things. A lot of things come at us. Mm. If any man chooses to serve me, he shall suffer persecution, and it comes with it, you know. And something that kind of that it's it's kind of a freaky thing. So yeah, it's it's a pretty bold statement. Yeah. But it's also um, uh, uh, real life. I dig. Yeah. Good answer. What are some of the lies? I think just to humanize you guys a bit. What are some of the lies that the devil tells you guys on a daily basis that you got to fight against? <laughs> just the the classic. You're not. You're not good enough. Adam, I swear, I was the same thing. I hear that, dude. Yeah, I hear imposter that. Imposter syndrome. You're right? not sure. good. Yeah, you're not good enough. And you know what you did last night or last summer? Another. Oh man. The classic film. The cl I know dude, what you dude. did last summer. <laughs> yeah. <I know>. The <laughs> devil uses that against me all yeah, the yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And he thought, and he thought, honestly. <laughs> I had a conversation with my brother-in-law this morning. My family's in town. My sister and her husband are staying at my house. And I said, the biggest thing I've been attacked with, guys, I'll tell you, Adam and Josh, okay, right now, over the last few years hmm. is Satan throwing doubt in my path. Hmm. Doubt about the fact that my God, my creator, which I sing about not being dead and how we believe that, how that can be thrown in my path. And you're like, oh, Michael Tate, what? Are you, are you dismounting your faith? No, no, no. I'm in there. I'm good. But Satan... Hmm. Gives me the Downing Thomas syndrome a lot of times. Yeah. And, you know, but, but then God shows up. He does things where I know could only be God. Yep. And I'm back at it again. I'm good to go. Yeah. Just because you play on stage and just because you write songs about it and just because it seems like this is what we do for jobs, it doesn't mean that you're immune to yeah. any of those doubts or any of that. The the stuff the enemy throws at you, it's the, it's the same. Struggle yeah. with the yeah. same things yeah. uh, as, as as anybody with any normal regular job like it's just it just seems like sometimes if you're in ministry that you, you i don't know maybe you should be stronger yeah you, you should, should be able to a higher standard have everything yeah, yeah, yeah. Together. come on man this is what you do for a living yeah, yeah. But, yeah. yeah and the battle point. for the mind is real the oh Bible talks about it daily if that's the battle it's fought man when you mentioned bring putting your armor on i mean that's it no question about the, the head piece man because what is it it's a romans 12 you know romans 12 about uh renewing our minds yeah you know what I'm It's like, mm -hmm. I have to do because left to myself, I go to a lot of crazy places. Yeah. So I have to go, God, you know, come in and, 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 but on the other hand, I'm encouraged because it's, once again, it's, it's real life. Think about Paul. Mm. Who knows what Paul thought about? Mm. And it's the only it's times in prison, you know, and, and mm. times alone. If as a single beat man. up and, but, but also coming from the life he came from, his soul. Just the stuff that he had oh, yeah. done. It's his conscience. It's on his own. It's yeah. yeah. like my conscience gets the best of me. Yeah, good point. And it, 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 but so, yeah, it's, it's a crazy cycle, man. But all that to say, as we're living in this horizontal world, mm. we're staying in a vertical mode mindset too, for sure. Because if not, I mean, just a little piece, a little open part of the arm. Like, yeah. You know? <laughs> I talked to uh, Chris Llewellyn recently. He's uh, from Ren Collective, and he said something very similar to what you're saying. He's like, I, I find that I'm much more of a doubting Thomas than a Peter. Yep. Like, I thought I was a Peter walking on water, but I'm actually much more of a doubting Thomas, yeah. and I need God to remind me every day. Me too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's good. True. Okay, so advice. You probably get this a lot, uh, asking for advice. So advice for the next generation, the up-and-coming generation, Gen Z's very uh looking for authenticity and they're looking for jesus and they're looking for something solid based on your experience and your faith and and in what you guys do as artists what, what advice can you give man i i i have a 16 year old daughter and uh That's she's yeah, <laughs> she's just junior in high school and so it's just she's just right in that in that zone where there's just choices everywhere right? yeah you get choices for everything and so i i don't know we just try to we try to tell her that we love her surround yourself with good people because mm -hmm. you you really do become who you associate with Carousel, um, yeah. good and bad so you're in trouble now given that you're a oh, newsboy trust me i am trying to bring this you're, thing up yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You're praying and yeah. you're praying yeah. it up come really on lord and hawks said we can have the best <laughs> this is why i'm here no question about it yeah. chief of sinners right here <laughs> <laughs> yep, but yeah you know just that. i think that's a that's a big thing on a on a deeper spiritual level i i try to tell people i mean i this only is I want to say five or six years going now where I have tried in my life to make the very first thing I do in the morning, as soon as I wake up, very first thing I do is uh, open the Bible mm -hmm. before I look at my phone, before I go have breakfast, before I even get out of bed. So it's the first thing. It's the first thing first. Mm -hmm. And it really does, even if you don't think about it, it really does make you at least start your day 
Acknowledging. Focusing on the right things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's two seconds or whether it's five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever, I, I try to encourage people to make the first thing first. And, and line with Adam just said, it's funny how much we're on the same, same distance right now. I'm going to be talking about this at all today, about this interview. We know it was going to come up with your questions, Joshua, but people say, what would you tell your younger self? Mm -hmm. I want to tell the younger generation. I would say three words. And these three words haunt me to talk about them. I get choked up because I've made some regretful mistakes in life and you mm -hmm. have to live with them mm -hmm. and they suck josh mm -hmm. it's it's a, and, and satan must remind it all the time you have to know that god is greater in you than all the devils in the world but still you're human so you think about that kind of stuff the three words i would say choices have consequences mm -hmm. choices have consequences mm -hmm. and i have to rely on two verses First John 1 9, if we confess our sins, if it's a conditional statement, if we confess our sins, he is faithful when people are not. He is just when people are not. To forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all, not some, but all of unrighteousness. Right on. It's a daily battle, it's a daily struggle, it's a daily reconditioning, re upping, renewing. And then I would say, uh, when it talks about, um, in uh, Proverbs 3, 4, 5, and 6, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct that path. The crooked paths can be made straight. Mm. God can make what Satan used for bad into good. It can all come full circle. Mm. But we have to acknowledge, first part of the verse, him first. We acknowledge God, acknowledge, like, that means adhere, listen. What you say, Dad, not just booming out the other ear. You know, sometimes that has happened. Being a kid, equipped in church, I've heard it all. Went to Liberty. I met Toby and Kevin. I've done three bands in my life, including my own solo band. And I've heard, I've been, as we say growing up, I've been Bible thunked. Yeah. You know, and I've, I've heard it all. Of recent, I've really reapplied it. Mm -hmm. And it works. Yeah. It gets sweeter with age. It gets sweeter with age. It yeah. works. Yeah. Good. So, what are some of the things we can pray for you guys for? As a band, as individuals, family members? Because we got a, lot, well, of, we got a lot of church leaders that watch our stuff. Definitely so. pray that God will give us the tools, the music that impacts um, people's lives, because it's what we do. I mean, that woman mm -hmm. stage in some arena or church or theater or somewhere in the world. Last week, London, the week before that, the country of Columbia. Mm. Uh, next month, or uh, Oregon, next month, Cal Germany. Mm -hmm. So, and then the tour starts next this coming weekend. So a lot's going on. So definitely that God will give us the songs that impact people. He's been so faithful through the years, you know, mm -hmm. from DC talking to now when his voice sell songs. And then to pray that um that he keep he keep us grounded and, and give us and, and keep us keep that hunger alive. Yeah. People always ask, How do you have to do so much? Yeah. Do you get tired of doing it? Da -da. Yeah, it can happen. Yeah. It can happen. But in the whole world, I hate even saying the word jadedness, but jadedness can come become a part of it because you've done sure. it so much. Sure. But I can genuinely say, and Adam knew it with news voice, but I can genuinely say for the other guys, Jody Duncan and, and, and Jeff, and Adam for that matter too. We love what we do. We feel called to what we do. And we're going to do it until God says not to do it. Mm. We're going to, we know, as my, my grandpa would say, we're going to die standing up. We're going to, you know, swing it as we go down, if you will. So just pray that God will give us that stamina and, and that, and that hunger and that consistency. Amen. We will. And Adam, we got to pray for you because you've got a 16 year old daughter. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, a boy, a 10 year old boy. And then a lot of the guys have, you know, many, many kids and, uh, they're all in, in school and they all come home sick. And then we get on a tour bus with 12 guys crammed in a little tour bus and COVID one, three, four, five, and one six. guy, yeah, <laughs> COVID 18 times. And, and so, yeah, I'd, I'd say pray for our, pray for our health on the road as we travel a lot. I mean, yeah. from coast to coast and across the pond and yeah. around the world. Um, and then we're doing 35 shows this fall. Yeah. And so it's, uh, it's a lot of travel. Um, but yeah. Pray for our health and pray for our families. Yep. Will do. Let me segue into some leadership questions. So are you guys planning out the next five years of Newsboys? Like, is there a vision? Is there a plan? Like, how are you casting a vision for the band? I'll say what Jeff Frankenstein would say, our band director. If you play, if you play, if you say what you're going to do, what you're going to be in the next five years, or play it out, you're probably completely wrong because you don't know where it's going to, what's going to happen. That, that's just not, not escaping the question, but yeah. it's reality. No, that's good. The goal is to make music. Uh, we're looking at maybe... Uh, doing another movie that's kind of in the works. Uh, we'll hear about you hear about that as it goes on. Pray for that because it's very impactful. Uh, mm -hmm. we've done you, can't, that you can't post that. We don't, yeah. we, it's <laughs> cut. Un unconfirmed. <laughs> <laughs> unconfirmed, but I'm but, but, uh, looking to, to it. And then also using our platforms. We have, I mean, in other words, if God gives us 
something tomorrow morning to do differently, we'll do it. So we're open to whatever God has out there for us. Good. We've always been that way. I think things have changed uh, in the last three or four years, trying to plan out whether mm-hmm. we had five years or 10 years. That's fair. Because, uh, you know, used to, back when, when I started and when you were doing it, you'd have record cycles yep. and you would have a certain amount of time and then you'd have... You know, you would know that in, okay, six months, the album's due. We're going to tour that album for 18 yeah, yeah. months. Then we're going to write another album. And then it's going to be That's all due. changed. And that's <laughs> just out the window now. It's Now it's like we're going to collect songs. We're going to release a song here. And then we're going to release another song here. And then yeah. we'll release an EP. And then we'll release a full album. And then we'll release something else. And we don't know. And so it's, <laughs> uh, it's kind of all over the place. And so what we're doing right now is... We're just writing as many songs as we can. As God gives us every day. With, with just, we're, we're fortunate to be able to write with some of the best writers, yeah. uh, in town and mm-hmm. from all over, all over the world, really. Um, mm-hmm. and getting to write some really killer songs. And then as they come alive and, and become ready, then we'll share them with everybody and then hopefully have an album out sometime next year, mid next mm-hmm. year. Yeah, cool. Uh, and then tour, tour. And then we'll just kind of keep see. keep going on that on that trajectory, um, and hopefully it just it, it keeps going. It keeps getting bigger and better. People still want to hear music, and we still make music that people want to uh, hear. Enjoy, yeah, right on. Side question: This just struck me. You know that video you guys did, Magnetic? Yeah. Everybody was wearing black, but you were wearing white. Mm-hmm. Was that an accident? Did you just show up and forget your black outfit? That Joshua, day? what do you think? You think it was an accident, Joshua? <laughs> I mean, I'm just asking. No, I'm, I'm asking, asking for a, a question. Friend, you know, I mean, what do you, what do you I'm think, the interviewer, Joshua? Michael. I get to ask the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think the more, the more important question is why were you guys surrounded by electricity standing in water? Right. When when you There's were walking, a question. when you were walking on water, was that you guys saying that you are Jesus? <laughs> no, no, I was not. Do Jesus. you think you're Jesus, Michael? Thank not a, a far. <laughs> from it make it clear didn't you play jesus every, in the hero rock opera every <laughs> camera not him <laughs> no, i need him but i'm not him no I, because I, I mean on one side i'll be honest one side one well, honest i'll be honest uh white looks good on darker skin sometimes or to most times than not and it was kind of it was definitely you know a leasing thing like this put on all white put the guys in another color kind of pop you know like to be better than the other guys no not at all it was just just <laughs> total Total marketing, to make, total... To make sure that people saw you? <laughs> that was not my question. That was Adam's question. Guys. Adam, that's all changing. It's all changing. <laughs> well, I will, I will blast next, today for that reason. <laughs> the, the next video, everyone else will be in white. You'll be in all exactly, black. <laughs> exactly. No. Okay. But that was, on the little tip, that was a fun video to make. That was and really cool. Yeah, that was Jeff Frankenstein's idea. and He's uh, got some good ideas. He is, he's the guy's brilliant. Don't man. plan anything. And your videos <laughs> where you walk on water. I want to meet this guy. Yep. Yeah, he's brilliant. <laughs> But I'm not up to blast to make you. Yeah. That was a good song. Uh, okay, back to leadership, important right. stuff. Right. Uh, <laughs> best advice you've ever gotten from a mentor? My dad told me and my sister when we were kids. A wise dad. Nine kids in the family. Five girls, four boys. I'm the last boy. I haven't always followed this advice, but it's good advice. If you don't mean it, don't sing it. Mm. Mm. That that much, and it's like. So now you haven't always followed that advice. No, I'm not, because I've so sang songs which like. Which songs? Do you oh, know? Bob, Josh. You just opened up a whole. You can't know that. Worms there, brother. You can't know. You that. know what, Josh? Let's just say that I'm a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> Preach. Amen. Right. Amen. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's we'll talk though. That's good. That's all right. That's cool. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, and then, and then, and then oh, on the, that's one on the spiritual side, but on the human side of things, there's some songs that we that we do. I'm kind of like in a, in a set. Yeah, as a lead singer, I'm like, I'm watching him do, go on doing the song because I'm excited for the crowd. He's oh, wait till this next song comes. They're gonna love this song. They're gonna love this song. Love this song. Knowing this one, so I'm like, ah, I gotta get through this song because some yeah. songs just don't excite you, you know? Sure, you know. But sure. thank God, there's not there's not a lot of that in my life. Have you ever called an audible and just been like, sorry, gang, I don't want to sing this. Oh, no, I'll look at Jeff and say, um, oh yeah, and skip past skip that it. song. Yeah, yeah. Oh, have yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Right on. Not often, but sometimes. Maybe because the the show was going too long. Sure. Or I feel like. You know what? We've, we've done enough with this pounding on this one, this one particular area, you know, yeah. of, of, of a subject. How does that right? feel as a bandmate when he's like, it's great. It's all about him, really. So. <laughs> it's fine. That's not even just true. Just used to it. I don't know. <laughs> is there anything different than that? <laughs> this has just turned into a therapy session. Guys. Welcome to the Newsboys You're a jerk. You know you're being a jerk right now. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> we're going to talk through some of their personal issues. Um, so, I'm not a licensed therapist. I just want to be well, clear. Adam has a comment. Go, well, I was, gonna, I was going to go back to your question. The best advice, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, best advice that I ever please. got 
um, was uh, somebody told me, they said, um, react the same way to praise as you do to criticism. Ooh, that's horrible. Which is Whoa. receive it and let it go. Mm. And so, have you done that? Yeah, I, now, honestly, it's it saved my life because I played in a pop punk band I'm for ten be honest, years. That is hard for yeah. me. And so, I'm in some comments you right, right at the beginning of social media, where everybody is just like you're terrible, and they, you know, everybody finally <laughs> you know, from their basement was ever able to have an opinion on what you were doing and could tell you. And so, mm-hmm. it just dealing with a you barrage. You know, you. Yeah. People, you, you you get a hundred to one comments saying that they like you. Yeah. But right. Then what are the ones one. that you, what are the ones that you look for? You're like, yeah. you scroll through. Yeah. Great. You, we love you. We love you. Love you. Back to that You're terrible. You're the worst. You should quit music. Yeah. Yeah. You can't see. You, 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 you live oh, in yeah. that one. That's the one that sinks. And yeah. so mm. knowing that if, you know, somebody says, dude, you're awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. I appreciate that very much. Mm. And then let it go. Mm. Don't dwell on that either because mm-hmm. it's not that you, that you can't, if you just love that so much, then you're going to just want that. And if something else comes along, it's going to crush you. So you're saying that the both should be deposited into the think bank. I, I, yeah. I, I, you, you receive both. You receive yeah. the criticism. Yeah. yeah. But then you have to let it go. Yeah. You can't dwell in it. And the Why same you with push the delete, bu- delete button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it in. Uh, you know what? I'll put this praise to the side and not get cocky from it. Yep. Yeah. But it's nice in the future energy. And this one here, bleep, I read it, eat, delete. Because yep. if you dwell on it, dude, it'll rock your world. Yep. Man, that, no, I appreciate that. Good that word. resonates with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Good mentor. Okay. So we did a uh, recent uh, series of uh, articles called Worship in the Average Church. Dug up a bunch of statistics about what's really going on in the church in uh-huh. terms of songs that are being sung on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. So one of the stats that we, that really freak a lot of people out or just surprise them, I should say, is 69% of churches are still leading worship from a hymnal. 69%? 69%. Wow. So my question is, how many hymns are you guys writing? Oh, wow. You know what? Or you, would you consider redoing a hymn? I, well, we I, did a hymn yeah, record. We did a hymn record. We did, did a hymn, hymn, hymn record. record. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, we like to do those every now and then, especially at some of the, like, acoustic shows. Hey, we we'll do break that. out some of those. Yeah. What do we do? We do He Lives? Yeah, we He Lives. We do uh, just, <sighs> yeah, just a bunch of, like, the... What a friend we have in Jesus. Great. There it is. Great old yeah. songs. Yeah. So I read uh, that on the last album, you co-wrote 10 of the songs? Yes. Okay. So is that like the equivalent of being like a ball hog, but for songwriting, or how does that work? No, it's just interested. Now I had something to share. You know, yeah. <laughs> That's some, records, to say. some records, some records have you know I've done you know little to nil, and and I, I believe in chasing the song. Yeah. Uh, my grandmother writes it, and it's great. I'll put it on the record. If Adam writes it, it's yeah. great. We'll put it on the record. It's, yeah. It's not a thing of like it's got to be the lead singer. No, no, not at all. Because one thing I know for sure is I don't know a lot. Mm. But God does. And so if God breathes into me in that moment, mm. walks to the room and goes, here's an idea, go for it. Yeah. But also, too, on the practical side, I had a lot of time on my hands. Two years off the road during yeah. COVID. So I thought, never before I've had that kind of time to go in and craft a record yeah. and then walk away and change a course, walk away, rewrite a verse. I mean, I had, I had so much time that it was amazing. And I, I've never enjoyed writing a record, even including DC Talk, that I didn't understand. Yeah. Stan was like my favorite record I've done in News Voice. Right on. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, kidding aside, I mean, you you referenced a lot of your experience and that's the other beauty of where you're at as an artist is that you've got all this time yeah all this time with the lord yeah. all this great experience yeah. you know and now you get to write that into songs yes. and, and kind of minister to you know the next yeah. generation and pass that wisdom on through your songs. and now the beautiful part about that is going forward we had no plan on adding a fifth member to our band we were happy duncan phillips our drummer was adamant about <laughs> we're the, in his words, not being, he don't need Goggin. Well, let's play the Beatles with four guys, like the Stones, like the Beatles, the four, four, four. I'm like, at Duncan, that's cool, but what if? Well, no, no, what if? Then the what if came along, named Adam Ag. There it is. And we've been besties for a long time. I do some solo stuff on the side, and Adam Ag, along with another guy named Dave Stobel, would always accompany me. Mm. And I'm like, this guy is just so good. He's just, he's just a great player on bass, mm. guitar, acoustic, singer. Mm. Pretty much wrote the song, The Prom- Promised Land, Toby Mac, my best he sang. Adam, I wrote that song. Toby, you know, of course, made it his own, but Adam, the template was Adam's. This new record we're working on now, it's been great because, like, this guy is like, if I don't get to the studio, he just goes right ahead and starts writing the songs. So, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm like, okay, well, hey, hey, this is great, you know, but I've never had that. Yeah. So it's right fantastic on. now having, you know, an in house cat that you like and you love and has ideas that, 
are just fantastic. Mm. What's it like to you, for you now to be a part of this mix? It's really fun. I've never been in a situation where I don't have to be the guy, mm-hmm. like the front man, the guy that wears the white pants. Actually, I should have never brought up. I actually really <laughs> like it. I really love. He's <laughs> too sweet about that. I love, you know, and I've done, I've done the, Funk the front thing. man thing. Yeah. I did it for twenty years, mm. and so to be able to not have to do that. I mean, I don't. I, I liked it. I loved it. But I, I love this where he can go out and be him and not have to worry about anything mm-hmm. because I've got. I'll I'll pick up wherever he's he's brilliant, you know yeah leaving off or or doesn't want to do or we can tag team on stuff yep, yep. and same thing with the band guys if it's like well Jody's having to try to play two guitar parts well maybe I can cover some of that for him and he and, kills it I'm so proud of him I can't hide it. I'm so proud of him <laughs> it's great he is but it's been awesome and and one of the coolest parts is when you're in a band like Newsboys that is. Uh, one of the one of the larger bands, I would say, in yeah. our genre. Hey, it's pretty big. Um, <laughs> you get great opportunities with great writers. Yeah, that's which cool. is a little bit harder as a smaller artist, or especially as a new artist, yep. um, to get those opportunities, or at least to get the frequency that we're able to get them. That's cool. uh, we've been able to write with just world class writers, and it is so luxurious for me, and it's <laughs> just so enjoyable. I love it so much. Yeah. Getting to go in and write with these guys uh, that we've written, we've written about thirty songs for this new album. Yeah. Whoa, and, we ain't done yet. And is it going to be a, a double, a, a deluxe set? You, you're going to have, you're going to have to find out. <laughs> Where's <Wait and> see. <laughs> you wait and see. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's just been so fun, um, just to be a part of a great team. We've got a, we just got a, a great team from label and management, booking uh, everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it's really Blessed. cool. It's awesome. Blessed. We're excited. What are you guys currently writing songs about for this new upcoming album next year? Themes. Just give me themes. You don't have to tell me the song names or anything like that. One thing is about uh, the future. We've been uh, hoping the future we've been promised from the King of Kings. Okay. That's one song. We've got a couple couple of songs about that. Yeah, about, you know, the assuredness that we have. Yeah. In in our faith and in a future. What's the song about the hunger of worldwide revival? Yeah, we're praying for that. Did you guys go to Asbury or have any interaction? No, we didn't. We didn't go to that. I didn't. At least I didn't either. Yeah, no, but we had we had several friends that went up there and said it was pretty remarkable. I got to I got to go. It was pretty cool. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. kind of kind of cool. We did go out to. the California, uh, we got to write with our boy Matt Redman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. who's one of my favorite all time yeah. worship leaders as, you know. We have a song that talks about God being our fortress mm-hmm. and our place of, of refuge and a place to hide and a place to under the shadow with wings, the whole nine. That's a powerful song, a ballad. Yeah. We have songs about just a lot of songs about. Uh, I tried to, I, when I, when, I, when we're writing this record, I used to lead worship at a church mm-hmm. called the bridge in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were in college at Arizona state and it was right next, right next door. We actually met in a nightclub on Sunday nights. <gasps> uh, they would shut it down nightclub. and we would meet in the nightclub. Yeah. We had to clean it out. It was, it was kind of wild, <laughs> but, uh, we, we met there. And then a couple years later, as I transitioned out and went out on the road, the church took over a food distribution center in South Phoenix surrounded by a large homeless population yeah. inner city we switched to sunday mornings where we would serve like a, a breakfast for people in the community and we'd have a couple hundred people come in and like three cars in the parking lot and like 200 people inside yeah uh, in that church i would go back and lead worship there and it was just a wild experience playing these songs on the stage and seeing this audience of people that had had nothing mm. it was so different than being here in middle tennessee where a, a lot of the population is is doing well mm. um and there especially especially in that situation where there were just a lot of people that were down on their luck or just had and never really had anything just spilling their guts out to jesus mm. it was just it was special and so these songs that we're writing i want to put it through that filter of would these people in this church setting want to sing that? Wow. Mm-hmm. Would it connect with them on that level? Not just the people who have it all together and, you know, just want a little pick me up. Does it hit at a level where if I have nothing, I can still sing this song? Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Wow. Well, that begs the question. I mean, you guys get a lot of radio play. A lot of your songs are radio hits. Do you think about that at all? Like radio versus congregational worship versus the setting you of the song? You can't help but not think about that. I mean, the, the till doesn't necessarily wag the dog. Mm-hmm. But there are times you think, okay, well, you know, how can you, what's, what's the whole purpose at the end of the day? We want to reach the masses. Yeah. And radio is a part of that. So yeah. I think that's we why think we, that have a, we have a team <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. that everybody's got their job that they do. Yeah. And if our job is to write the songs and to perform the songs, <laughs> then I want to write them as authentically as I can. Mm-hmm. And we, we present a song and it's, and I guess you could say it's purest form yeah. or raw, you know, yeah. the way it's written. Piano, guitar, vocal. Sure. Or even if it's, you know, whatever, but just we, we write a song. And then if our team says, well, that needs to be a radio single, then we'll kind of massage it to where it needs to be as, as far to, to, to fit yeah. Uh, what the best chance it could have of being, you know, a radio single that that everybody would would yeah. be able to play, mm-hmm. and so there's a little bit of 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 give and take there, not necessarily yeah. lyrically, yeah, uh, but just it usually winds up being production uh, on that. that well, one thing, and people are always at the forefront of your mind, thinking, how can it reach the most people with this song? Yeah, and those usually the songs that end up on radio because people relate; they can relate to what you're saying. Yeah, the masses can't. Yeah. Yeah, I love that visual, though. I'm picturing that nightclub and those folks mm-hmm. just getting down and dirty with worship. That's so good. <laughs> it was down and dirty with I mean, it's true. It, it wasn't good with worship. It was like... down and dirty, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We had a whole cleaning crew and everything. Yeah. <laughs> that was tough. That's great. You mentioned your dad, so I didn't know that you grew up preacher's kid. Yeah. My dad was a... Uh... Is that in KC? No, I actually grew up in D.C. Oh, Four D.C.? Blocks. Okay. Northeast of our U.S. Capitol building. Okay. My dad was a cab driver and a, a, a street preacher evangelist and then started i think three or four small churches or maybe four churches yeah the last one was important there yeah. he started four churches in dc inner city churches never massive 200 members 300 members but uh just had a a burden for souls his favorite life verse was proverbs eleven thirty: the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life neither one of souls is wise mm-hmm. but that's his son in the day of the money you make the games you get american music awards the list goes on platinum records gold records what is a profit if you don't reach the masses and they lose their soul, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I look at the back, back then. My dad was so wise. He wasn't educated. He only had a fifth grade education. Mm. But he knew the word. He kept in that pulpit, Josh. And that man would speak the gospel and just hit you right between the eyes because yeah. he couldn't be more real than that, you know? That was his heart, his heartbeat. So that's the foundation I had growing up, you know? Yeah. In some ways it was tough. In some ways it kind of drove me away from certain things mm-hmm. that were right and mm-hmm. sometimes it drove me things things to, to things that were that, that were right because I had a great example, my dad. Hmm. Pastor's kid, man. I, my dad was a pastor for twenty years. Really? And never I never in a million years thought I would be in ministry, but let alone on stage yeah. doing anything, you know, until until I was a teenager basically, late late teenager. So it's uh it's crazy that <laughs> full circle. A bunch of us are pastors kids yeah. in the band. Yeah. Awesome. Worst kids in the world, those pastors kids. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Here's two great examples of what That's not right. to be as a pastor. That's right. That's right. That's right. True enough. Well, Adam, you brought up DC Talk quite a few times in this interview. So I, I, I have to I ask, have. what is your favorite DC Talk song? I don't think I ever did once. <laughs> I, I, um, I, wasn't that Adam that said DC Talk? I thought that was Adam. <laughs> oh, it's so good. DC Talk's my favorite band of all time. Yeah. Uh, we, we say oftentimes to me in private. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but Adam, the, no. um, actually, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story, I I did like DC Talk, but I I got into DC Talk a little bit later. I didn't listen to Christian music. Until, I, don't, I don't know the story until like DC Talk? No, I'm just making it up right now. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't get into story. Christian I'm music until I was like 19. Okay, and so that would have been what like era was that? 98. Okay, that was Supernatural. Right and so yeah. so that was the first record that I heard from DC Talk was Supernatural, wow. and I was like, this is awesome. And so that That's was crazy. right when I was learning how to play instruments. And so I'd go up to the church, uh, like late at night when nobody was there and I would put the supernatural CD right here and I'd put the headphones on and I'd play drums to the supernatural CD. I taught hey, myself how to play drums to that CD. Um, and then I went back and found this other little CD called Jesus Freak. And I thought that was pretty good too. Wow. Um, but That's yeah, crazy. man, I was, I was a fan. Yeah, I mean, I was a fan. I was in the band. I, hey, okay. you know, wow. yeah. Who wasn't a fan? No, yeah. I don't mean like fan. Like, oh my gosh, I'm so good. No, fan. This is like, yeah. You can tell when God's using something. Yeah, it was cool. You're a part of it. It's like you're just happy to be in, in, in be a part of it. Yep. On your album, Stand, it looks like you guys brought in Toby Mac and yes, 
You brought in who else did you bring in? Uh, Mercy Me. Yeah. Um, Bart to sing a few songs. Was that just you needed more white guys in the band, or what was? Wow. What was that about? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like it wasn't enough white guys, or no, no. We just did that because these are these are good friends of mine. Oh. They have to be of, okay. of 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 lighter skin tones. However, the beauty is found in diversity, Josh. You should know that. <laughs> That's the beauty of God's creation: the diversity. Good. So I'll, I'm going to write that down. That's yeah, all going to get cut. Yeah. That's <laughs> totally not going to make it. <laughs> That's all we better make it. That's real life. That's real life. That better make it on every camera. That was good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Just what you said. Just, that's good. That's good. All right. Last trailer. question. This one's very serious. Right. You guys have over a million subscribers on YouTube. Can we have some of your subscribers? Yes. Yes. You, what, guys, as you watch this First podcast, movie. please. <laughs> Oh. Subscribe to <laughs> Worst Leader. Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. We want to be part of it. Uh, <laughs> they probably will. You guys are a lot of fun, man. Thanks for hanging. Thanks but, for you us, know, a lot of depth. So I mean, good. A lot of wisdom. Truly I appreciated did. it. it well, keep awesome. it in your prayers because we need it because we are. Yeah. We're, 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 on, we're on that road. We're still on that, that road, you know? Yeah, right on. For sure. Keep Thanks. going. Let's straighten out. News Boys, Adam A.G., Michael Tate.